Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Over the last several weeks, we have asked, is Islam convincing? Are there solid grounds for believing Islam to be true? Today, we conclude our series. How do we know that God exists? How do we know that Muhammad is a prophet of God? And how do we know that the Quran is the word of God? To recap this series, I am joined by Dr. Shabir Ali, our resident scholar and also my dad. Dr. Shabir Ali, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. A pleasure to be on. Now, we've been doing a series for a number of weeks um, called How Will I Know? And today we're cul culminating that series. Um, so I guess the purpose of that series was to kind of think through what makes Islam convincing to a person, right? Yes. And, and, and we've gone through a number of topics, you know, we've, we've looked at the existence of God, does God exist, and you know, the Prophet Muhammad, was he a prophet of God? We've also looked at the Quran, how do we know that the Quran is the, the word of God? So I guess the question a reader, uh, a viewer might have is, well, what's the point? You know, <laughs> why did you go through this series? What, what was the purpose of it? Yeah, well, let, let me just mirror what you have just said by, by repeating that uh, there, there are three central points that we covered. And, and these uh, three points are central to the whole question of how do we know that Islam is the truth? So the first one was, is there a God? How do we know that God exists? And uh, how do we answer atheists who may say that God does not exist? Uh, two, how do we know that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, truly is a prophet of God? And how might we answer critics who may want to prove that he's not a prophet of God? And uh, third, how do we um, show that the Quran it really is the word of God? So if, if there is a God and uh, Muhammad is his prophet and the Quran is the word of God, then we, we have every reason. In terms of belief, that makes Islam convincing. Uh, very much so. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it helps a Muslim to um, practice Islam in difficult times, uh, like our present times, because uh, people now will be challenging Muslims, so why do you even want to bother to be Muslim at all? Uh, and uh, on, on the other hand, uh, th there, there are so many other competing ideologies and theories out there, uh, so why choose Islam over and above some other theory? Our young people will be especially asking this question. Most of us who are already seasoned in the faith uh, are already com are complacent. That's our faith, that's what we've known for many years. Uh, we're not going to change now. Uh, but uh, as for the youth, they're searching and, and they want to know why should I be Muslim as opposed to being something else. And we live in a time when people generally question religion or look at it with suspicion, right? That's right. And uh, largely religion is seen to be something backward, uh, traditional, uh, just customary, something that you inherited from your parents and people are just carrying on the, the traditions. Uh, but uh, when we see that Islam at its very core uh, is a, a system of belief that is built on uh, the fact that God exists, uh, the fact that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a prophet of God, the fact that the Quran is the word of God, that uh, pr provides a very strong foundation for uh, living faith uh, in our modern world. So how do we know that God exists? Can you, can you give us your, your takeaway um, or, or your most important reason? For knowing well, God briefly exists? to recap, uh, we would uh, emphasize three arguments. So one is that uh, the, the universe could not exist without God. And uh, the fact that the universe exists is a good proof that God exists. Uh, second is the design argument. Uh, we see the appearance of design wherever we look, uh, right from the very inception of the universe, uh, going back to 13.8 billion years ago, to the Big Bang origin of the universe. Certain physical constants, such as gravity and electromagnetism, uh, are, are precisely worked out to be the measures that they are. And that shows that there is a grand mathematician who worked it all out and made it precisely to be what it is. That, that's the design argument. And the third uh, argument is the moral argument. Uh, without God, we wouldn't be able to make sense of our own distinction between right and wrong because the universe itself does not make that distinction. If we're just products of the universe, then there is no reason why we should make that distinction anymore. But we do make the distinction, and it only makes sense to make that distinction if God exists. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we know that Muhammad is the prophet of God? I, mean, oh. I know that a lot of Muslims actually 
um, you know, they believe in Islam because of Muhammad. And, and if you ask them what really motivates them to be Muslim, they say Muhammad. Yes, when we examine his life, uh, as much as we can know about it, uh, against the background of where he was born, where he grew up, uh, the system of life that people followed at that time, which we now describe as the time of, the, of ignorance. Mm -hmm. And we see emerging out of that uh, milieu a, a, a man who is known for his wisdom and sagacity, who has become a, a world uh, leader of uh, um, uh, unparalleled proportions. Uh, Michael Hart in his book, A Ranking of the Most Influential Persons in History, uh, titled The 100, uh, has given the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the number one out of the 100, the most influential person in all of history. So how, when, when we look at his life and his teachings, uh, it, it, it's beyond doubt that this was a prophet of God. He was an inspired man uh, in his environment, uh, drawing his people closer to God. When we look at prophecies regarding uh, the, a, a prophet to come after Jesus in, in the New Testament Gospels, uh, those prophecies uh, seem to point towards our prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So there are several reasons for thinking that he is really a messenger of God. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, on the other hand, when we look at the Quran, we can say that the Muhammad was not the author of the Quran. We're, con we're convinced that, you know, it, it had to come from God, Allah. Yes, we, 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 look, we can look at the Quran from many different angles. We see that uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sincere. He could not have invented the Quran on his own, lying to people uh, and saying that it is from God. We see that the Quran is speaking to him and commanding him, obviously coming from another mind into his mind, which is what the Quran claims all along. We see that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not trained to read or write, and yet the Quran has become a masterpiece in the Arabic language. Uh, it's too much to credit to a person who did not have this training. Uh, fourth, so we, we have seen that the, the Quran speaks about past history and independent research confirms the Quran's statements about past history, detailing things that would not have been known to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his environment. The Quran also speaks about uh, the future uh, and the future unfolds as the Quran already predicted. So uh, since God only knows the future, only God knows the future, this is evidence that the Quran is the word of God. And then when we look at the scientific statements in the Quran, Quran. Though the Quran is not a scientific textbook, it uh, draws our attention to things big and small around us and to our own humble beginnings in the wombs of our mothers. And the statements that the Quran makes about these uh, f uh, physical phenomena uh, are, are uh, very uh, unusual to come from a 7th century person. This uh, seems to come from somebody who knows the kind of science that we're discovering now. And who could that be but God alone? And uh, then we looked at the uh, mathematical patterns in the Quran where things line up in terms of the number of verses, the number of words, the number of letters, the specific places in which words are put in, in the Quran. All of this uh, speaks to a divine mind behind uh, the Quran and, and not the mind of some human being who lived in the seventh century uh, of Arabia. Mm -hmm. Which argument of all of these do you find most convincing? If someone says, well, why are you a Muslim? What would you respond? Well, I find the, the numerical patterns in the Quran to be the most convincing because this is something in my hands now. I can look at it. And uh, knowing the history of the Quran, I can ask myself, how did these patterns get into the Quran? Is it by some human interpolation or deliberation? And the answer is no. Uh, and the, the alternative is uh, that this is a, a revelation from God. It is God who was channeling the mind of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, such that he pronounced the Quran as it is and uh, channeling all of the work that goes into the Quran, guiding the people who uh, try to write it down, to memorize it from the mouth of the Prophet, peace be upon him, to pass it on to the next generation, eventually to write it into the copies that have now become standard uh, throughout the Muslim world, what we refer to as the King Fahad uh, copy of the Quran or the um, 1924 uh, Cairo edition of, of the Quran. Uh, this, uh, all the way down through the history, uh, seems to have been guided by God so that uh, we have the pristine text as it should be with everything in its proper place. Mm -hmm. What message do you hope that viewers will take away from this series? Well, I, I hope that uh, the series will be an inspiration to our youth in particular, to drive them forward, to, to carry this faith to the next generation, and uh, to live it in the present uh, generation. I hope that those who are faced with intellectual challenges and they're asking themselves, why do I want to be Muslim? Uh, this series will help them to hold their heads high and say, yeah, I'm a good, I want to be a Muslim because there are very good reasons for believing that uh, Islam is true. And not only do I want to be a good Muslim, but 
not only do I want to be a Muslim, but I want to be a good Muslim, which means that will translate into being a good human being, a good citizen of our great country and of the world. Thank you for that, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. Hey, YouTube, we hope you benefited from this video. If you liked it, or if you didn't, let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, check out some of our other videos. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.